Hello, and welcome to 360 Insights podcast, where we're going to explore the mindset, skills, and strategies necessary to build a successful and fulfilling career in today's rapidly changing world. I'm your host, Jennifer Dole, and in this podcast, we're going to dive into the challenges and opportunities that come with navigating these twists and turns of career journeys. And I'm super excited today to introduce you to Swati. She is my guest, a seasoned product executive with a passion for thriving digital transformation and helping startups grow from zero to one. With years of experience in the SaaS industry and a talent for leadership coaching, she is a true expert in building successful products and teams. And she brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to any project that she's working on. Such an invaluable resource. And I'm so glad she's on this podcast with us. Welcome. Jennifer, thank you for having me. And I must say that was a very generous introduction. I probably don't introduce myself that way. So thank you for that. I'm always available to introduce you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you again. And, you know, really what I would add to that is um, when I think about um, myself in general, in broader terms, I'm a builder at core. I've built systems, I've built processes, I've built teams, and I'm really passionate about helping individuals build their professional journey. And when I think of my own trajectory, professional trajectory, um, it's been a series of very asymmetrical building blocks. Mm-hmm. I have worked in um, building products. I have worked in consulting and leading digital transformations. I went back to building products. I've uh, established customer success divisions. I have ran professional services. I've done sales engineering, you name it. I think other than maybe just the finance department, I feel like I've run different facets of business. And um, quite frankly, Those pivots are uh, what ultimately allowed me to build a more diverse set of skills, a greater understanding of business, and um, ultimately be able to to help not only businesses, but, but individuals in a more effective manner. And one of the most profound things these pivots allowed me to do is this process of self discovery. Mm. A very clear self-awareness of, okay, where, what are my strengths and where do I play really well uh, in what kinds of businesses, industries, cultures, etc. And also what, uh, where do I need to collaborate? Where do I need to seek the right partners? Um, so the outcome of all of this is just this, this, uh, this very inner, deep inner sense of knowing my strengths and my weaknesses, embracing it all, and um, ultimately, you know, just showing up with more authenticity, which quite frankly, I struggled with for the first half of my professional journey. And I love that I finally embraced it. Yeah. I just, I hear so much career resilience in what you just shared with us. Um, and, And that's what... I think is the basis for this conversation today is really building that career resilience so that you can continue in your journey with these pivots and twists and turns. So as we dive into some of the content, what are some of the most important skills that you think are important for navigating this changing job market and building a successful career like you had? Absolutely. So, you know, I do want to preface uh, when we think about the the job skills, right, the competency that you need to land a job and be successful at a job, those hard skills and soft skills, that those are just table stakes, right? Everybody has those, everybody needs those, um, and you need those to, to keep your job, to hold on to your job, right? So the areas that I focus on are um, how would a job and is a job allowing you to build more career agility? right? Mm -hmm. So you can take different paths depending on how the market is shifting and what skills are in more demand versus not so much in demand, right? Which ones have become a commodity versus a rarity and things like that. So three things I generally recommend and follow even as my uh, personal um, grail. One is, um, you know, building skills that will allow me to become a generalist in addition 
to a specialist, right? And I'll dive into the, each of those. The second is um, the willingness and the ability to take risks, getting mm -hmm. comfortable with taking risks. And the third thing is networking. Hands down, very important skill in this day and age. I right? absolutely agree with you. I yeah. think that's one of the most important things. And I would love to learn more about how you approach networking and building meaningful relationships. Absolutely. So let me actually dive into some of the generalist aspects and how okay. that played in my um, in my own journey. So, you know, when I think of generalist, um, I think of it more as, you know, you, you've got to hone in on whatever area you're a specialist in, typically whatever area you ended up um, with after college as your first job. And it's good to hone in some of the specialty areas. Uh, but for instance, I started my journey in product management. And then I soon pivoted into program management. And from there, I pivoted into consulting and digital transformation. And with every building block, it, um, it broadened my understanding of the business, mm. right? So what I recommend is if you are a professional who want to build more agility in your career path, look for ways in which you can broaden your, your connectivity with the business and how does your specialty fit in the broader context. So if you're a product manager, maybe look for stretch projects or collaboration opportunities with product marketing. If you're a, if you're a technical professional, look for opportunities to help with technical sales, right? These are all great ways to kind of broaden your skill set, and it helps you build confidence as a result of that too. I love um, what you just said because so often we think about networking as being external to our organization. And yes. you're really saying the, the network needs to be also internal to your organization. Absolutely. Actually, on the topic of networking, right? How I approach and what I recommend to individuals. Some of the fundamental pillars. When you think of network, you have to think of network as both internal and external. Yes. Okay. And there are actually three um, fundamental pillars, as I see from a networking standpoint. You have to have strategic network both internal and external to the organization. This mm -hmm. is the network that will help you with your upward mobility. Or if you have, you know, if you have interest in becoming an entrepreneur, who's going to help you kind of land your first gig, your first client, et cetera. So that strategic network is very key, both internal and external to the organization. Your internal strategic network is going to allow you to land some stretch projects, right? Some special projects. Yep. Um, the second element of this network is the operational network. Again, this is the day-to-day -day collaboration that you need to be successful in your pursuits. This could be your peers, this could be your team, this could be team members from other groups, uh, internal to the organization, and then also vendors that are external to the organization. Very critical. And the third piece of this is the community network, right? This is your community of subject matter experts, whether internal, and also external to the organization. And let's make sure that you're not limited by one domain, right? If you're a technical professional, look for diversity of um, uh, even technical skills, right? You might be a front-end developer, but do you know anybody who is, you know, can you connect with someone who's a full stack developer, for instance? If you are a professional looking to grow on the leadership track, can you connect with other leaders in the space? Right. So make sure there is that diversity of um, community representation. This could also be based on your interests and hobbies. So, you know, some some very fundamental areas of networking that you have to cover internal, external, plus strategic, operational and community. The other thing I would mention is that there has to be diversity of gender representation. Mm in your network. Absolutely. And actually, according to research, this is where I feel uh, women lose out, who tend to predominantly have network with other women. Mm. It's very important to have that diversity. So women tend to have diverse uh, networks of women. And it's predominant. Yes. And men tend to have networks of men and women. Yes, it's more, I mean, it's definitely more concentrated if you think about it. Uh, but when you think about um, the proportion of leaders in yep. corporate, uh, it yeah. is 
even today it is there is there is an imbalance there right so if you want to cast a broader net if you want to expand your um, potential opportunities on the horizon both internally and externally you want to get comfortable with networking comfortably with both genders yes it's very critical and this is where i feel this is kind of a blind spot for women um, mm -hmm. So one area that I emphasize and coach on um, uh, very heavily. And I would say, you know, even in my own experience, I realized that uh, around 10 years ago and my time in tenure in consulting is really what helped me kind of get out of my own shell and get comfortable mm -hmm. with approaching people. And, you know, the number one thing is this own, this barrier, this mental barrier that we don't belong. Yes. Right. So a lot of it is you just have to overcome that barrier and reach out to people, ask for help. You'd be surprised how many people would be forthcoming when you ask for help, of course, within reason and, you know, as a professional um, and be willing to reciprocate when needed as well. Right. It has to be mutually beneficial. So these are all really core fundamentals of building a healthy network, a network that allows you to grow, a network that allows you to continue to build more connections. And I do have a handbook on that, which we can uh, you know, share with our listeners later, uh, which walks through the whole framework and even kind of, you know, a workbook that helps you identify where your gaps and opportunities Amazing. may be. I would love to share that with everyone because you've got just such great insight and you're breaking it down to a place where it's actionable. So many people are, you know, they've, they've got um, such a strength in and, and a unique voice, but they're afraid of sharing it. Yes. Afraid of networking, afraid of putting themselves out there. So um, to have that advice that you've got, to have a resource is just great. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, what are some of the um, advice that you can give or is there a specific example that you can share um, about pivoting in your careers and using your network? Yes, yeah, so, you know, Pivots is something you just have to experiment with, right, is generally what I see. Um, and when I talk to professionals, the it's, it's mental barriers that holds them, first mm -hmm. of all. So I think step number one is you have to get past these mental barriers that you have inflicted upon yourself. It's really kind of chaining you down. Um, and, you know, in a lot of my coaching, Jennifer, it's so interesting how this comes up repeatedly, is this this attitude of um, um, really high expectations from self, this attitude of absolutism, right, where which leaves no room for taking risks, which leaves no room for doing things outside of your comfort zone. Some of the most common beliefs, for instance, I hear are, um, you know, I must be competent at all times. The other ones are, I must avoid situations that uh, allows others to think less of me. Mm -hmm. The other one is others must not criticize me. And, you know, you don't realize these are subconscious beliefs that are so deep rooted in you that are just holding you back in life. So a lot of work I do in my coaching is to identify the beliefs that you have about yourself, belief that you have about others yep. and beliefs that you have about life in general. And, you know, kind of reframe those so you can approach uh, life from a place of more flexible mindset and not so much absolute mindset. Mm -hmm. So that's number one is get, you know, get out of your own way, really, is what it comes down to, Absolutely. right? Um, but once you have, then, you know, look for how can you continue to build and stack your skills, mm. right? You have to identify what you already have. And depending on where you're looking to go and, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, the, the pursuits you want, if you, for instance, want to ultimately aspire to be an entrepreneur someday, you have to get comfortable with sales, you have to get comfortable with approaching people and networking with people and asking for help to give you a chance. Yes. Right. So um, it's identifying where you want to be and then stacking your skills. As a technical professional, like I mentioned earlier, look for opportunities for technical sales. Look for opportunities to help a product manager identify ways 
to identify market customer gaps, for instance, right? These are all ways that will allow you in your entrepreneurial journey down the road. Absolutely. Right? So it's, it's, it starts with, first of all, getting out of your own way, getting past your mental barriers. Second, identify the skills that you have and what skills you need to, to stack, depending on where you're going. And then, you know, finally, you have to get comfortable with asking for help. Mm-hmm. Right? Asking yeah. for help, taking risks, all those kinds of things. It's, you know, ultimately, it, I truly believe that when we talk about pivots, um, you just have to get comfortable with a possibility of failure. Yeah. And even failures teach you a lot about yourself. Yep. And failures don't have to be catastrophic. Doesn't it have to be. be like, I missed that step. What did I learn? <laughs> and that's what, uh, you know, I was talking to a technical professional, really sharp woman, um, knows her chops really well, is actually contemplating two different opportunities. And I'm like, well, which one do you want to pick? And she's like, you know, I really like this other one, but I don't have the skills in that. Mm. And I told her, I'm like, look, let's differentiate here. You have the skills. You may not have the experience for it. Let's be clear here, right? But look for the 60 to 70% of your existing skills and how do you, how you approach problem solving, for instance, right? Look for those 60 to 70% of skills that are transferable in the job. And if you're not going for this next job that is going to stretch you, challenge you in that 30 to 40% zone, then you're settling, (laughs) you know? So you just have to continue to stretch your own limits in that capacity. Well, I think you and I could continue on this topic for hours. Yes. (laughs) But we've come to the end of our time. And I just wanted to thank you so much for sharing so much information in a short period of time and offering up some additional resources for people as they're building their career resilience. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer, again, for having me. My pleasure. We'll talk soon. Yes. Bye-bye.